What a God. I am thankful for this opportunity and this privilege. Thank you, Bishop, Bishop Dobbs, Brother Shelton, my brothers, elders, and you guys. Yeah, you guys. I'm very grateful. I'm just going to get right down to it. What I'm going to talk about tonight, it kind of shook me up, but I guess it's like any message that is taught or preached or ministered. There will be people who absolutely will not hear what I am saying. There will be people that will hear it and it will take some time to ponder it. There are people here who will gladly receive it. And there's some actually who this really doesn't apply to because they're already doing it. I'm going to talk about personal evangelism tonight. <clears throat> we need to hear what the Spirit is saying tonight. I cannot tell you how much this has been weighing on me. Everything for the most part that the scriptures that I have down and everything else were down here even before Brother Rodriguez ministered Sunday. But it's within the same vein. I think sometimes we don't fully understand what personal evangelism is and I'm not going to go about giving you tools and things of that nature. You can go to Pentecostal Publishing House and figure that out yourself. But really what it boils down to at the very crux of the matter, the very heart of the matter is him. His heart has to be our heart. And if his heart is not our heart, it doesn't matter. I know that sounds a little rough, but it's the truth. Praying every day isn't just so you can feel good and feel this presence at home. It's so that we can get connected and do something. It's not just about us. And I understand traditionally that hasn't been put forth in that manner. What we need to understand is that we are actually responsible for something. We are responsible for things. And we're going to get into some scripture here. But I want to lay a little bit of a foundation. When you look at the early church, what did they do? Anybody? Okay, they prayed. Bishop, what was that? Wow, how'd they do that? What was that? Really, was it just a special person? Amen. I'm going to blow up your, your, your tradition tonight one way or the other. <laughs> Not me, he is going to. Because when they went everywhere, they, they went out, they did. They didn't just gather in homes and gather in the temple courts. They did all that and more. They went into the temple courts to pray. They didn't go into the temple. They couldn't. They would have been summarily tossed out. Not to mention they weren't of the priest class. 
And they went from house to house and fellowshiped and broke bread and talked about the things that God was doing. They didn't have a building. Historically, they did not really have a building until Constantine. Wow, what did they do? They didn't have a building. What did they do? But yet somehow, as Bishop said, they turned their known world upside down without a church building. Imagine that. Wow. What a novel concept. Something stirred up inside of them that caused them to turn their world upside down. It was prayer. And remember, they didn't have a Bible either, guys. Oh, my goodness. They didn't have a Bible study, Bishop. They didn't have a Bible to bring with them and say, hey, look at this word right here. Wow, what happened? But they turned the world upside down. And for those of you that think that it was just Peter, James, John, Thaddeus, Bartholomew, and the others, scripturally, I'm going to prove you wrong tonight. Scripturally, the Word of God tells us exactly what they did and who did it. Amen. Let's go to Acts chapter 1, eight chapter, chapter 8, verse 1. Because this sets the backdrop for the scriptures that I'm going to start reading. And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem. Oh my. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Remember that, except the apostles. Persecution had hit the church. And they took off. They scattered. God sent them out. And when you go a couple more verses further and verse 4, it says, Therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Now if you remember in a couple verses before that, the apostles stayed home. They went everywhere preaching the word. That means they went as an ambassador, as a herald, as in that time a town crier type of thing. And wherever they went in Judea and Samaria, they were teaching, preaching, speaking the word of God, speaking of what God had done for them. They didn't have a Bible. All they could do was tell them what God had done for them and how he, this man named Jesus transformed their lives. That's all they had. I'm glad Bishop used that example he did tonight. Did you give him any scripture at all, Bishop, when you were talking to him? Did you? A little bit? Okay, just a little bit. Okay. He didn't whip out the Bible study. He didn't whip out, you know, exploring God's Word or, you know, one of those hour-long ones. But he planted a seed in that individual's heart. He went everywhere preaching the Word. Planted that seed. You getting where I'm going already? Great. That's fantastic. It'll make my job a little easier. Thank you, Father. And that's all they did. They didn't know anything else to do. They didn't have leadership classes. They didn't have Bible colleges. They didn't have nothing. They had prayer. They had some direction from the apostles. And I'm sure the Lord was raising up other people, and scripturally he was raising up other people into, into 
areas of leadership, etc. But that's all they did. To make it a little plainer in Acts chapter 8, verse 4, in the message, it says they were forced to leave home base. Christians all became missionaries. Wherever they were scattered, they preached the message about Jesus. That's pretty plain. So you see, we do have some measure of responsibility, whether we like it or not. For the life of me, and, and I've and I, I've been there. And the Lord has just been dealing with me for quite a while on this subject and similar subjects. But when we came into the kingdom, we repented, we were baptized in his name, we were filled with the Holy Ghost. It wasn't just to occupy a space on the bench. If that was all there is to it, you could just take us out of here as we're coming up out of the water speaking in tongues or as soon as we get the Holy Ghost or, you know, whatever order it happened in your life, and then we, we're gone. We don't have to worry about it. But that wasn't his plan. His plan was left in the hands of men. And it's incumbent upon us to be submitted to him and carry out that plan. We don't get a pass on this. We may think we do. We may have thought we did. But I'm letting you know tonight, we don't get a pass on this. The word is very plain about what happens if you do not those things that the Lord commands. And while I'm thinking about it, thank you, Lord. If you want some good practical direction on reaching out to the lost, write this down. Take a note, whatever app, pen, Go to YouTube. Look up Bible with the Bishop channel. The teaching ministry of Bishop Wright. And look for Spirit-Led Soul Winning. 30 to 40 minutes each lesson. It will help you. If you are praying, if we are praying, and I've already watched them, and I'm starting to watch them again, if we'll watch them in a prayerful manner and a humble attitude, it will affect us. And his heart will then start becoming our heart. What did Jesus come to do? I mean, think about it. What did Jesus come to do? What was his sole purpose? There you go, Elder Bai and, and Brother Leisher. To seek and to save that which was lost. Is that reserved for elder, bishop, evangelist, prophet? Absolutely not. Everybody. Everybody. You know, I was doing some, some math and in, in, trying to do some math in my head and while we were sitting here in worship, and I'm not a mathematician, so, and I didn't have my calculator with me, but think about just Bartlett alone. There's, what, 40,000 people in Bartlett? 35, 40,000 people? If we were to try to reach them, this whole community, on one Sunday... And just for argument's sake, if we've got some mathematicians out here, we could fit 500 people in this building if we threw that out, threw chairs, all that stuff. How many church services do you think we would need to have on a Sunday to reach them? It 
80. 80 services. You ready, Bishop? <laughs> I didn't think he would be. And, and neither are the rest of us. <laughs> and that would be, you'd basically hear for about 24 hours. Wow. That's, think about that. And yet, without a building, they turn their known world upside down. We need to start thinking differently. We need to start thinking like Him. His heart does need to become our heart. If his whole purpose was to seek and to save that which was lost, how can ours be any different? And, 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 and sowing seed doesn't mean sitting down there with a, necessarily with a Bible study. It's, it's sharing your testimony of what the Lord has done. It, it could be something, as, as Elder By had mentioned, that the Lord prompted him to go to his neighbor and if they needed anything, let me know. That, he's planting a seed in that environment. The Lord prompts you to go walk out your door and, and go over to your neighbor. Maybe they're elderly or older and they, or there's something happened to them and they, they're incapacitated and can I mow your lawn for you? I'm not preaching to them. I'm not teaching to them. But the Holy Ghost said go over there and make a connection with them. Plant a seed with them. That's what he did. That's what you did. Is it going to happen every single day? Maybe, maybe not. Depends. Depends if you and I are in the right position for that day to be used of God in that manner. Again, that comes back to prayer and relationship. I can't stress it enough, guys. Everything boils back to relationship. Everything. And if we're connected to him and we're, we're, we're down on our face and Lord, talk, use my life today, Lord. Lead me to somebody. He will. Brother Williams talked about last week, don't go to, don't through the self-checkout line. Go through the, the regular line. Amen. Amen. I had to catch myself this week. I was in a hurry and I started and then I, I turned around and went into the line. <laughs> Did anything happen? No. But that doesn't mean anything. Personal experience in this has the Lord kind of nudged me and wanted me to do something. Yes. Have I failed to do it? Yes. Because I wasn't sure. And I get home, and the Lord's like, you asked before you went. I repented. I said, sorry, Lord, we'll try this again if you are graciously allow me to. Because I don't want you to think that I do this perfectly every time. I miss it sometimes. I get unsure. Because it's some, in our day and time, it, it's foreign. It's, it's, how about I just invite you to church? And we'll let all the strange, mysterious happenings take place and, and do it for you. But that's not biblical. We all have to play a part in this. Every one of us has to have that heart of seeking and saving the lost, reaching out to them. Will everybody be saved? No. Will everybody that, that the Lord brings into our sphere or that we share our, our testimony or plant some seed with, are they gonna, is everyone going to receive that? No. No. But that doesn't mean we don't do it. That doesn't mean, you know, you're sharing your testimony with somebody who's just looking at you like, what kind of a knucklehead are you? I don't want to hear this. Well, the Lord told me to tell you. Okay, 
I've done my responsibility as long as you've done it the way he wanted you to do it. Maybe six, seven months, a year later where somebody else comes by and waters that seed, you'll never know it. You, you understand what I'm saying? Our mind, we have to, in order for the, for the apostolic church, not only of Bartlett, but the apostolic church as a whole, our whole mind has, our, our, our thinking, our way of doing things needs to change. And it has to become like him. Now, I know some of you are already doing this, and I know that. God bless you guys. Thank you for being out ahead of the curve. And I mean that. In this instance of preaching that we read in verse 4, I just want to continue to provide some definitions so you understand it's not somebody special. To bring good news, to announce glad tidings, all of the joyful tidings of God's kindness, in particular of the messianic blessing in the New Testament, used especially of the glad tidings of the coming of the kingdom of God and of the salvation to be obtained in it through Christ and of what relates to salvation. It really is that simple. We take preaching as what Bishop does on Sunday. <laughs> and it is, it's, it, it is. It is a part of it. But what about Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday? What about Wednesday during the day? What about Sunday in the afternoon or evening? Pretty much narrows his opportunity down <laughs> pretty significantly. I'm going to blow some things up even more here. Romans 10. Thank you. Verse 14. And 15. And it says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? That doesn't mean this guy, or this elder, or that elder. That doesn't mean necessarily Apostle Sean or Bishop Dobbs. And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Hmm. Where else do we find feet in Paul's epistles? There's a very foremost prominent part of scripture that we always like to talk about. Amen, the armor. It says something about the feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. Hmm. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm trusting it was God who was tying this together a while back for me. The feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. In the Bible in basic English, it says, 
Be ready with the good news of peace as shoes on your feet. What do feet do? Feet go. Feet move. Now, they can stand, but typically, unless you're in real bad trouble in the Marines or the Army, you're not going to be standing all day. Like, all day. Do you have to do that, bro? Just stand there all day? Okay. But then you got a chance to move, didn't you? More than likely. Otherwise, you'd pass out. <laughs> but the feet go. I'm, I'm going. I'm moving across the platform here. I'm, I'm going. When I go home, I'm going to actually walk out the door, and nobody's going to carry me. Unless you're big and strong like Luis over here. <laughs> the dude's like the Hulk, man. <laughs> but you get my point. I'm going to go. When the Lord says, go talk to that person over in aisle five, you're going to get your little feet and you're going to say, go. there's aisle five. Lord, okay, I'm here. What am I looking for? There's a few people. And you're, gonna, you're just going to know it's that one that's right over there. And he's, well, what do I say? Who cares? Just go do it. Go up to them. In today's day and time, I understand it gets a little awkward out there. But you know what I do? A lot of times I'm like, excuse me, um, this may sound a little weird, but I felt that I need to come in and talk to you or pray with you about something. That's how I do it. it maybe that's even more awkward than other methods. I don't know. That's what I do because it is awkward. And my flesh, me, says, I don't want to look like a knucklehead here when they say, get out of my face. It's the truth. I, I use the example of my business. I didn't bring my phone in here, but I, I have a list, literally. When the Lord convicted me to start praying with people, of all these people that that I have had the opportunity to plant some seed and pray with them. And I've had some communication after that. Not much, but I planted a seed. The Lord allowed me to, to do that. There's probably 30, 40, 50 people there. And as often as I remember, I placed my hand on my phone. Lord, Lord, let that seed do something with it. Do something with it. Because that's the other part of it. We have to remember that we can pray all day long for somebody. And that is not sowing seed. That is not planting seed. When we, when we plant the seed and we go home and then we begin to pray for them, then we're watering that seed. But the seed just doesn't get into the ground unless we plant it. If y'all garden, you realize that you can have a packet full of seeds, but until you put it in the ground and do something with it, you are not going to get the, the necessary plant or vegetable or fruit that you're planting. It doesn't do any good in the packet. Oh, 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 do you understand what I'm saying? God has put something in each and every one of us, a word, a testimony that he's wanting us to plant into somebody. And we need to come to that realization that we were made for more than sitting on a chair or a pew or a bench. That is not what he saved us for. Somebody said, well, I don't have a great testimony. So what? You have a testimony. He translated you from darkness to light. That's a testimony. When he filled you with the gift of the Holy Ghost, you know what that felt like. When he went down in Jesus' name, you know how light you felt when you came up out of the water. That's a testimony. You just planted a seed. Amen. 
In our life group, we've been talking every week. I, I call on somebody. You got a few minutes. Tell me how the gospel has affected your life and what it did for you. The reason being, that may be all you or I get with an individual is just a few minutes. People in the checkout line, they're not waiting around for you. They may, but typically they're going on about their business. The person at the gas station, they, their pump is filled, their car's filled up. They're, they're, on, they're on their way. They're, they were going somewhere. Our mindset has to change if we want to propel the apostolic church to where I know God wants to bring it. We have to be a part of what he's wanting to do. Do you guys ever bother to look at that? Almost every time I walk in here, I look at it. And I just, oh. It affects me. And so we just read some scriptures out of the New Testament that show that it wasn't just the apostles that went out and did. Paul was writing that last scripture for the church. The armor of God isn't for the ministry. If it was, we'd have a lot of problems. That was for everybody. Because you and I, you know, because he's bishop doesn't mean he has superpower against the principalities of darkness and all that kind of stuff. Well, maybe he's got a little bit. I'm Batman. <laughs> no, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. But that's so that we can be equipped. And part of that was the feet. Shod with the preparation of the gospel, the good news. It's nothing, it's that simple. The death, the burial, and the resurrection and how it applied to your life. I, the Lord talked to me and, and I heard the word or somebody talked to me about something that was going on or something that happened to them and, 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 and it affected my heart and I, and, 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 and I repented and I was baptized in his name and I was filled with the Holy Ghost. And then it just replicated We've been called to make disciples. We've been called to reach. Another thing with, with the, the numbers of just Bartlett alone, Elgin has over 100,000 people. Yeah. Aurora has over 100,000 people. Naperville has over 100,000 people. And I know that's broad from here, but put that into context. Think about that. Between just the, the towns just around here, you know, you're talking half a mil. And I know not all of us live in Bartlett. I know not all of us live, you know, some, we're all over the place. Think of your town. Think of your city. Think of your neighborhood. And, and you, sh you and I, we should be thinking of our neighborhood. Because quite honestly, that is our mission field. The place you work, that's our mission field. Where we go to school, that's our mission field. The grocery store that we frequent, that's our mission field. But we have to understand that we are a, an integral part of God's plan. There is no other plan. He's not doing it himself. If he was going to do it himself, we wouldn't be going through everything we need to go through. He'd still be here. We're the plan. Like it or not. It's imperfect as it is, we're the plan. As imperfectly as I, I, I share my testimony or share the gospel, I'm part of the plan. 
as imperfectly as you share your testimony or try to teach a Bible study to somebody, you're the plan. There is no plan B. If you can find it in the scripture, tell me. Not what some other person has said or taught, but what the Bible says. If it's in there, I'll gladly accept it. But as of right now, I don't think it's in there. But that's our responsibility. It's to seek, reach out to them, to seek after them. We're praying about it. We're, that's where that happens. When we pray, that's why prayer, again, is so important. When we get connected to him in the first part of the day and, and we're hearing from him, we have to hear from him. If we're not hearing from him, I suggest you reevaluate your situation. Because he just doesn't talk to me. I'm nobody special. My wife is not, and yet that's right. He's... <laughs> but I'm not. I just want to be his vessel. I want to be somebody he can use in whatever capacity. Even if it is just a smile and a handshake to somebody, if that's all it is today, then that's all it is. I'm fine with that. But that's where we get our direction. That's where we, we get in prayer. We get connected. And, and then we stay connected. Because he's not going to necessarily send you to your neighbor's house at 8 in the morning. It may happen at 4 in the afternoon. So there's connection that needs to continue to take place. That's a whole, Elder Bai taught masterfully on that for a couple, a couple lessons. If you forgot... Go back and listen to them. But I want us to understand, we have to think differently. If our priority isn't that, we need to reevaluate some things in our lives. It's the truth, guys. If that's not our priority, then... What's, what's, what's the purpose of this? So we can come and clap our hands and jump and shout a little bit and go home? I'm not making light of what we do, but you understand what I'm trying to say? And again, I don't do this perfectly every day, guys. I don't. I, I can't tell you how many times I've had to just sit in the chair, just fall on my face, and God, I blew it today. I, I missed it. I let that one go. I'm sorry. But that has to be our priority, guys. Let's think about it even further. Elder Stokes talked about it last week, about putting the word in here, in our hearts. It's not just so that we don't sin against him, but it's so that we can use that word. Again, his words, what if we can't come here? Does that mean that the church of the living God folds up and dies? No. It was always meant to continue in perpetuity until his catching away. So that means even if we can't meet here, that doesn't absolve us from the responsibility of still going out and trying to reach this lost and dying world. That does not absolve us of that responsibility, guys. And I know myself coming up in this, Invite them to church, invite them to church, invite them to church. And that's fine. Invite them to church. But then take them out to lunch and then talk about the Word of God with them. Plant some more seed and see if they're not interested enough in a Bible study. It's not that hard. But see, the problem with, with tradition is that everybody brings an, a guest and then they expect this guy and his staff to take care of it. 
another numbers example. A hundred people come in here on Sunday. Hungry as all get out. Bishop, what are we doing? I'd have to defer to you because I, I have no answer for this one. You get my point? What was that? <laughs> Just cater it in, man. Bunch of pizzas coming in. Okay, so, all right, so we feed them pizza in the, in the fellowship hall. Okay, now what? Let's see. You work. You work. I know Elder Stokes works. My kids say I'm semi-retired. So maybe I can pick up a, a couple extra from those guys, and that's fine. I'm glad to do it. But okay, so, you know, and then Elder Swan, he's pretty stretched too. So who's going to work at discipling them? Who? You're going to do it all? You, you ain't going to be able to do it all, brother. You'd have to, you'd have to quit your job. <laughs> That's where that part comes in. We're, we bring someone, we're responsible for that person, guys. We're here to assist, we're here to help, we're here to answer questions, etc. But you get my point. We're it, guys. You got to understand this. We have to think differently. We have to think kingdom-mindedness. We have to think Jesus-mindedness. Not what tradition has traditionally taught and showed us. So if you were like me and grew up in that environment, he's had to change my paradigm. He's had to change my way of thinking. Because again, what happens if we can't meet in this building? It's on you, bro. It's on you, sis. It's on me. For those he brings into our orbit. And if that does not become our heartbeat, we are in trouble. And I said we because I'm in with we. Our mind shift has to change. The parable of the sower was very simple. The seed is the word. It explains it. Good ground, stony ground, thorny ground, wayside ground. That's just somebody who took seed and went... That's it. Your job is done. You go home, you pray about it. That's the rain. Again, not everybody's going to accept it. Some will be like excited and then fizzle out, whatever. That's biblical. It's going to happen. Not everybody who hears the gospel is going to accept it and be saved. There will be many who will just reject it and walk away. There will be others that sometime down the road, God will bring somebody else to their life, water that seed, plant some more seed, dig, dig it up a little bit more, and we may never know about it because they've moved to California. Who cares? It's his kingdom, not mine. And, and, and let me add this, because this happened to me when I would pray with people. I wouldn't pray with people initially because they didn't live here. And I was like, well, they're never going to come to church with me. I'm never going to be able to get them into a Bible study because they live all the way in Timbuktu. And the Lord said, really, whose kingdom is it? And I, oh boy, I've got some, I got some like repenting and some explaining to do, Lucy. I did. I just, Lord, you're absolutely right. That is not right. And he began to explain to me this. So it's not like I haven't, like I said, I don't do this perfectly, and I've messed it up plenty of times along the way, and I probably, I, no, not probably, I will miss it at some point in the future. Not intentionally, but I will. It's 
So how are they going to hear except they're sent? That's us. That's you and I. Feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. Our testimony. A word maybe specifically that God gives you in prayer for somebody. However, whatever. That part is not my responsibility. My responsibility is just to carry it out. To go and do. To say or pray whatever it is he's wanting me to say or pray. Or as I said, just a handshake and a smile. Sometimes it's just that simple. I used that example a while back of at Mod Pizza. The Lord's just put it in my mind to go to Mod Pizza when we were coming back from our kayaking thing. We were talking about where we want to go eat. And, and I'm like, pizza, Mod Pizza. And she's like, okay. I like Mod Pizza. Not all the time, but I like my pizza. And we get there, and there's this gentleman with his little kid. You've probably heard me say this. Had all kinds of stuff wrong with him, and I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, this kid. And we talked, and we talked, and then we came up, and the Lord just said, pay for their meal. Paid for their meal. We talked a little bit more. Our pizza came up, our stuff. We got and took our stuff, and we went. I, I felt nothing else to say to that individual. My mind was absolutely blank at that time. We sowed a seed. It wasn't for my benefit. The Lord was teaching me something about that. And I'm guessing some of you have experienced what I'm talking about and didn't do something about it. It's okay. You blew it like I did. Okay, you blew it. Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me for that. Give me another opportunity. I'm going to wind it up here. This scripture's just been just tearing me up all day. And I'm hoping that it does for you as well. If you want to come while I'm reading. Psalm 79, 11. Oh, Lord. In the King James, it says, Let the sighing of the prisoner come before thee. According to the greatness of thy power, preserve thou those that are appointed to die. Let the sighing of the prisoner come before thee. According to the greatness of thy power, preserve thou those that are appointed to die. Passion Translation says it this way. Listen, Lord, hear the sighing of all the prisoners of war. All those doomed to die. Demonstrate your glory power and come and rescue your condemned children. That is that right there. God. Those are the people that we go to work with. Those are the people we live near. Those are the people we go to school with. They're, 
They're crying out. If we could just hear that family that's, that's broken because their son or their daughter is strung out on drugs. If we could just hear that husband or that wife who's crying out because their marriage is falling apart. If we could hear that kid who's crying out because his mom and dad are just fighting and going at it all the time. Oh, God. If that scripture doesn't affect you, I don't know what will. Bishop, I'm praying. Lord, let me hear this sighing. I know what that's going to do. But I want to be torn up. I want my heart to be rended in that fashion. Folks, I can't make it any plainer than what I've done. If, if I'm misunderstood, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I've spoken what God wanted to speak. But now it's up to you. The altar's open. I'm going to put a caveat on this, Bishop, if that's okay. If this isn't affecting you, then don't come up here. Seriously. And I'm not being mean, I'm not being calloused. But only if you want to be changed and transformed, only if you want his heart, only if you want to hear the sign of the prisoner, only if you're willing to be used in that capacity. Because we can't have business as usual in our personal lives anymore. The kingdom of God will not suffer it. We have to be fully immersed and involved in his kingdom. That is his kingdom. Oh, Jesus. Ah. Lord God, there's many who are coming. Lord, that this would reverberate over and over and over in our hearts and in our spirits. Let it go there. Let it be quickened there, Father. Oh, God, let it be quickened in our spirit. Let it be quickened in our spirit. Let it move from the head to our heart, to our spirit. Oh, God. Oh, God. God, 